Three, two, one. This is my favorite. You know, I've thought about making baklava at home. It just seems like a pain in the butt. I'm Kelly Choi, and I happen to live in the most ethnically diverse city in the entire world. Today, I'm taking you on a trip to three different restaurants representing three different cultures and their delicious food. Really simple seasoning, gorgeous. When I look at the fish, I know it is over yeah. coconut. Well, that's because you're the expert. <laughs> I'll see you guys out there for the taste. This is Eating Around the World, all from home, my home of New York City. First up, let's head to South America for the simple pleasures of Uruguayan food. This culture's cuisine is truly a fusion of many other European countries. Uruguayan food has lots of Italian elements, like pastas and pizzas, but also reflects the influences of Spain, France, Portugal, and Argentina. Meat is a central ingredient, like steaks and sausages, and a popular street food called the chivito, which is essentially a steak sandwich with everything added to it can be found on practically every street. I'm gonna tell you, chef, I could eat meat three times a day, so I'm really happy to see you make this for me. We're gonna make the churrasco. It's the skirt steak, duck fat potatoes, and we've got the chimichurri for the salad. Let's do it. Mm. Got that nice sear on it. Four or five minutes for a nice medium rare. You hear that char? I can feel that heat. It smells really, really good. Oh, that is a beautiful piece of meat. Pasture-fed meat from Uruguay. I am loving this churrasco. Mmm, look at that perfect medium rare. With that beautiful chimichurri. Oh. It's divine. Next, we're heading to Harlem, where a thriving Senegalese population is the backdrop for some classic West African food. Not sound too familiar? It didn't to me, either. This is Cisse Alhaji, the chef and owner of Ponte Bistro. Cisse originally hails from Senegal, but he's lived in Harlem for over 25 years and now considers it home. The focus here, I would loosely call it West African. Is that a right sort of label? I'm trying to do fusion because uh, my training is French, but where I'm from is Senegal, and Senegal was colonized by the French people. Right. So we have that mixed culture. If you want pastas, we have. If you want chicken, we have. If you want fish, we have. We have everything for everyone. Some typical West African ingredients include lots of seafood, particularly fish. Everyone pretty much eats fish every day. The dish that Chef Cisse wants to make for me is a branzino called poisson yassa. My mom used to cook it almost every Sunday. This fish here, it's the bronzino, That's right? right. It's a Mediterranean sea bass. So we're going to season it from the inside That's out right. and stuff it. A little bit of salt. I put a little bit of parsley. All right. Even behind this mask, I can smell the nice aroma. It is hot back here. It is hot back here. That's the way we love it. Two to three minutes and we're going to put it in the oven. We're going to finish okay. it in the oven. So the onions go in, this is for the yasa sauce. For the yasa sauce. Some red bell pepper. Sweat those together. Yeah. Got some vinegar in that, gives a little tang. Yeah. All that goes in. A little Got bit of mustard. French mustard, the Dijon. This is gonna take hours to cook. Let's get that fish out. Oh wow. Beautiful. Nice crispiness. Drizzle it all over, lay it right on top. When the sauce is good, all is right with the world. You can't have enough of it. I feel like this sauce, Chef, we could put it on fish, meat, That's right. eggs, almost anything. Voila. That is beautiful. A hearty meal. Thank you, Chef. Enjoy. I'll see you guys out there. All right, thank you. All right, I've got an incredible Senegalese feast. Check out this giant steak. I've got a crab cake, crispy tuna, the moufrit, and of course the poisson yassa, which is what I want to try first. 
I wish you were here to help me eat this feast. Cheers to you. Mmm. That sauce is to die for. Let's indulge our sweet tooths, shall we? How about the irresistible pastry known as baklava? One of my favorite versions of this Mediterranean and Middle Eastern treat can be found in downtown Brooklyn. This is Mohammed. He owns this bakery along with his wife, and their family baklava recipe dates all the way back to 1880. The traditional Lebanese style of baklava is on the drier, crispier side and is shaped like a triangle. The preferred nut of choice? Walnuts. Lots of cultures celebrate the nutty, buttery taste of baklava. Think Greece, Turkey, Egypt, or Armenia. But who really invented this food? No one knows for sure. It's just one of those food debates that will continue forever. But what I can say is that the Lebanese version here is divine. It smells so good in here, guys. When I walked in, I immediately was like, you just, you can't help but just fall in love with the smell and the aroma of the butter and the phyllo and everything. We're using one of the best butters in the world. Yes. Local Pennsylvania butter. There's nothing else in that? It's just delicious butter? Well, that's my secret. Oh, that's, okay. that's we don't know. Really... You gotta layer the butter yeah. in between those layers of phyllo. Absolutely. To put all that flavor in there, to make it crispy. Walnut filling. Mm -hmm. Smells so good. I see your technique going on there. This is ancestral. This is family history. Yes. That nice butter is coming up. Yep. So now, does this go into the oven? Is it ready? Yes. Mmm. This one is a perfect sweetness, but it also has that, like, just the roundness of the butter. It's just so delicious. This is my favorite. The rose. Mmm. 